Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful morning today. We've had a couple of days of just so much rain. There's been flooding in certain places, but today the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, they are loving life. So I'm just down in our olive grove because I'm checking on our trees. We have lots of very plump and very juicy olives that are more than ready for picking. So we're gonna start that tomorrow. Today, I need to head down to the tiny house because I've got some investigating that I need to do. As soon as you step foot into this building after there has been some rain, particularly heavy rain, you can really see why we need to replace the roof. So obviously we want to replace the roof ASAP. We're in autumn, we're soon to be in winter, and in general, they're pretty wet seasons here in Portugal, but we are being held up a bit with the roof because of the wood required. So while we're waiting for the wood, we have put together a list of other jobs that need doing. Some of it is prep work, some of it is jobs that we were going to do once the roof was on, but it just makes sense to bring it forward, get them done now, and just keep things moving along nicely. I'm looking at how hard this concrete mortar is that's been used between the stones and on the face of the stones. I wanna see how easily it comes off and try and get an approximate idea of how long it might take me if I was to remove all of it and break it all out. So after 90 minutes of doing that, I've come to a few conclusions. The first is that if I do the whole building like this, I'm gonna have the biggest shoulders known to mankind. I mean, honestly, it's such a workout. The second is that it will also take me an absolute age. I'll probably be old of gray hairs if I do the whole building. And the third is that I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do the feature stone wall on the left like we had planned. And that's because whoever did this before has just splattered this concrete mortar all over the faces of the stone. And it's a mix that's got lots of cement in and very, very big aggregate. So when you try and take it off, it's really hard to do it without damaging the stone. I actually have an attachment for my drill, which is like a metal wire brush. So I'm gonna give that a go and see if that'll clean off the face. Guys, that is extremely disappointing. Let me take this mask off. Yeah, if I'm being honest, I'm not very happy about that. I've spent about 10 minutes trying to work on it and you really can't see that big a difference on the face of the stone. Let me show you. So this is the stone in question that I was working on. As you can see, it still doesn't look, you know, particularly clean and it still has lots of concrete and lots of evidence of where the concrete has been removed. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do there. It's evident that I'm certainly not gonna be able to get this job done properly with the tools that I've got. I think I'm gonna leave that for today. I need to go away and do some research, see if there's any other tools or any other techniques that will help me do that. Any stonemasons out there watching, What's your thoughts? Am I wasting my time trying to do this? Do I need to just accept defeat or is there some technique? Let me know in the comments.
Good morning. It is much windier today than would be ideal for picking olives, but the sun is shining and I think it's time to get started. Nets. Buckets. Rakes. Ladder. Bags. Loppers. And poppy. the first tree done these things are actually pretty low tech but they're surprisingly effective and this little tree only probably took what do you reckon Ricky 15 minutes yeah, not even if that. that and the first one so we're bound to get quicker at least I hope so <laughs> So apart from the odd branch like this, we're not actually doing any pruning or trimming today. We're just gonna get the olives off. And that's because in the near future, probably the next few weeks, I actually want to build a fire pit because whenever we have a fire, it always gets wider and wider. So I wanna build something nice and big to contain it. Yeah, so we're gonna trim them all in a few weeks time once that fire pit is complete. <laughs> So we've just had a quick stop for lunch and now we're heading back down for round two of the picking, this time with both dogs in tow. In case you were wondering, the reason why we brought Poppy down this morning and not Teddy is two reasons really. Firstly, because Poppy is starting to suffer from some separation anxiety, particularly from me. So she can't really be left alone without Victoria or me in the room because she's just getting a bit destructive. We are doing some crate training, but you know, it takes time. So for now we have to bring her out with us just to ensure that our things don't get destroyed. And the second reason is because Teddy suffers from arthritis. He's had it for over five years now. And in the mornings, particularly when it's wet and it's damp and it's cold, it's not fair for him to be outside on the ground. So we leave him inside, but he's coming out with us this afternoon because the sun is shining and it's nice and warm. Now, apparently real olive farmers, they test the olives off the tree and they can tell at what point it's ready. Now they're never ripe for eating straight from the tree because they're super bitter. You actually tasted one last year, didn't you? Straight off the tree. Yeah, I can still taste it in my mouth now. <laughs> <laughs> but I never had one. So we thought it would be fun to stop and have a little taste test. There you go. Oh, Enjoy. I feel like I'm really going to regret this. Why is Don't mine you... so green and yours no. is purple? No, well, there's a mixture. Okay. There's, they're not oh all the God. same colour. Go on. <laughs> That's actually fine. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Try it. That literally tastes like an olive out the jar. <laughs> Go on. I'm then. not even joking. Have you stitched me up? Did no, you actually bring really? one from the house? Go on. <laughs> did you bring that one from the house? Oh my God. I can't believe you did that. Oh, that is so horrible. I bit into that second one with so much confidence. Oh, that is wild. I can't believe you did that. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> So I'm just picking out the worst kind of twigs and stalks that are in there. If you're not aware, the process in Portugal is basically uh, you take all of these to a place called a lagar, 
and basically you give it all in depending on the amount you've got whether you get your own oil back or mixed with other people's the lagar which is basically the press they take a percentage of your oil kind of as payment and you obviously have to pay for the bottles as well Right, this is the final tree for the day and we're both pretty tired so we thought we'd have a little competition. Who can pick the most olives in 30 seconds? Got the timer. Are you happy with your tool selection? Mm, it'll do. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. seconds up <laughs> right so we've got everything balled up let's see uh whose is the biggest oh, i've got a feeling you've won this you know let's have a look oh, oh yeah you've definitely yeah. won <laughs> well done champiano <laughs> we've run out of light yesterday so i couldn't show you oh but there really wasn't many olives. We've got two half full sacks here, and that's from about three quarters of our olive grove down at the bottom. And just to give you an example of how low that is, last year I picked just one of our most mature olive trees, and that filled up an entire bag just from one tree. I think the reason is because there was a big drought in the winter last winter and obviously going into the summer it was very dry i know lots of people aren't even bothering to pick theirs but yeah we're going to spend the rest of the weekend picking all the rest of the trees we have here at the property but we thought right now we'd sample some of the oil and give it a taste I've pulled out a few of the olives because at the lagar where you have the olives pressed if you don't have the minimum quantity you don't actually get back your own oil it gets mixed together so we wanted us to have a little taste of our own olive oil just need to lightly crush them to take out the stones um oh gosh they're going everywhere <laughs> So the next step is to pop it into this blender. I need to make sure there aren't any rogue stones in there though because I don't want to break it. <laughs> okay, so that's how much we have. Next step, put a bit of water into it. Apparently this helps release the oil from the pulp. This looks absolutely disgusting. <laughs> My hands already feel beautifully moisturised from working with all of those olives. Oh, I can't get this off. <laughs> Ricky, I might need a hand. Oh, that's better. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that looks vile. <laughs> Does it smell too bad, I don't suppose? Oh, oh God. <laughs> Mmm! <laughs> oh, it could look like some sort of uh, chocolate mousse. Now you have to stir it by hand. <laughs> I'm not feeling very hungry. <laughs> the recipe said to stir it in a circle and, ooh, centrifugal force, is that the word I'm looking for? Where basically gravity and physics does stuff and it pulls out the oil from the mixture apparently by the end of this stage oh no oh no this is going everywhere by the end of this stage you should be able to see beads of oil on the top of this slurry right this is just going everywhere so i'm going to use a bigger bowl probably should have started with that I don't know if part of the problem is that our olives are so much riper so there was more liquid in it. Perhaps I shouldn't have bothered putting any water in but it did specify that you should. 
The next step is to get your muslin. Well, I have not got a muslin, so I'm using this uh, food bag, but hopefully it'll work, and basically strain it. It's just it's like we're pouring chocolate milkshake into a bag. <laughs> I think that's being quite complimentary, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh dear me. Okay. So, oops. Some gentle but consistent weight, apparently, to push that down. It's been half an hour, so let's see what we've got. <laughs> the big unveil. Oops. Oh, we've got something. Still doesn't look very appetizing to me. <laughs> now for the strangest part, a little syringe to actually try and extract this oil from the top. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Badly. <laughs> right, do you have a taste test? I think so. Okay, yeah. Let's give it a go. After you. Mmm. Mm. Lovely. It's nice. It is nice. Shame it's not ours though. <laughs> ours was an absolute failure. Don't speak with your mouth full. <laughs> Whoa, I've got a mouthful. Yeah, ours was just sort of brown, greasy water. <laughs> Couldn't have looked less appetizing, <laughs> but you know, you win some, you lose some. We gave it a go. Mm. The taking part that counts. So we're gonna enjoy the sun eat this bread with some lovely olive oil. Hope you have a fantastic week and we'll see you next time. <laughs>